Good evening, good evening. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, it's Chaba Madima here. Welcome to Back Chat. Uh, today we'll be talking to Stephen Mukoka, aka TP. Uh, I'm just going to wait for him to log on and we're going to get going. But an awesome evening of uh, chatting coming up. Thanks for joining and thanks for logging on, guys. Um, Stephen Mukoka is going to send me an invite now and then we're going to get going. Wayne Sneeman, I see you. Hope you're well, buddy. Chelsea Lawson, or was it Lowen? I see you. I'm just going to accept Stephen Mokoka's invite now. And Welcome to Back Chat. We're going to be talking all things athletics. Reynard, I see you. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Yeah. Hey, I'm good yourself, man. Hey, 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 Mokoka. How's things going? Hey, I'm good yourself. All good, all good, all good. Hey, thanks for, for joining us on Back Chat. No, no, thanks thanks for having me, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor, you know. Every time um, I've, I've heard you speak, you know, you don't speak much at training, but every time when you talk, you know, there's always wisdom. And I know that uh, people are going to learn a lot from you today. So uh, thanks for, for coming on, you know. Uh, no, I, you know when we are at the workplace, it's different when when we are speaking. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's that, that's the way of life. Yeah, Le- yeah. Less work, more work. Exactly, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna do an introduction uh, to you. Uh, I'm gonna do an introduction to all those who are watching, uh, so that uh, they can know who we're chatting to here. Uh, so I'll just do a quick introduction. I won't take too long, but. They must know, you know, that uh, we're talking to one of the, the best middle distance and long distance athletes South Africa has ever seen. So let me just do your introduction. All right. Over here, we've got uh, Steve Mukoka. He is the African Championships 10,000 meter gold medalist, World Student Games 10,000 meter gold medalist, 13 times SA champion. This is ranging from the 1,500 meter all the way up to the marathon. We've got the SA 10,000 meter record holder, Stephen Mokoka, TP, also World Championship, fifth place uh, at the World Championships. Uh, so, I mean, that's an amazing CV, man. And just thank you so much for joining and uh, round of applause to you, champ. No, no, no. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, appreciate All right, it. tell me, so, so how have you been? Uh, obviously, the lockdown hasn't been easy. Um, uh, for your training, but at least now you're able to hit the road as well. Uh, how have you been in general? I mean, I can say the first six weeks was hectic, but uh, it's better now because one can run whatever time they wish. I mean, even now, you can go out and run. So it's, it's, it's better now. But the first six weeks was very hectic because uh, running test, you know, you don't even know what to do. Yeah, you don't yeah. understand where to go <laughs> and whatever. But yeah, now, were you, eh? were, you, were you busy with push-ups, uh, sit-ups, uh, and all that strength work as well? No, I was very fortunate to run around the complex uh, okay. for the first four weeks. I think they they gave me a hustle the last two weeks where <laughs> the body was complaining because I was waking up very early around five just uh-huh. to run around the complex. But after that, then they started giving me a hustle. I think I got a an email telling me that we are not allowed to run. So that's when the problem came. Because, you know, <laughs> it's very hard to, to sleep without running. So <laughs> to jog in the morning and then to jog in the afternoon. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, after four weeks, uh, the body corporate started complaining. So yeah. and that's when I had to start uh, complying. And then uh, the two weeks was tough. And after that, uh, it started, things started became okay. Okay, okay. No, it's good. At least uh, it was just two weeks. Uh, thanks to everybody who's joined. Guys, just make sure I'm speaking to Stephen Mukoka uh, over here. Just make sure if you've got any questions that you want to send, write down your questions. It's going to be interesting. Janet Siliga, I see you. Edwin Sisepi, I see you, brother. Wandi Sile, Wandi Sile, I saw you as well. Um, yeah, thanks for joining, guys. And yeah, make sure to ask your questions. We're just gonna have a good chat uh, with uh, Stephen Mukoka. All right, Mukoka. Yes, 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 Timon. Uh, before we start, we have to play a game. We have to see how sharp your mind is. You know, we want to see if uh, the mind is still uh, firing uh, uh, during this uh, lockdown times. 
Sure, 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 no problem. All right, it's 30 seconds. I've got my stopwatch over here. I want you to tell me in 30 seconds, uh, what does uh, Stephen Mukoka carry in his uh, training bag? 30 seconds starting now. So name as much things as possible and go. Sparks, training shoes, warm-up shoes, socks, tights, vest, training pants, uh, uh, the bag as well as the roller, the foam roller. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the basic thing. That's 15 seconds. Give me, give me more, give me more. No, that's what I carry. That's what I carry. Uh, the that's water it. bottle and the supplements, that's it. You see, okay, 10. 10, 10 is not bad. And your time is up in three, two, one. I uh, know at least you're better than Reynard van Rensburg, eh? Is it? Uh, Reynard only had four things, eh? Four things. Yeah, but the thing is that we are marathon runners. You only need your, your supplements, your bags, and your shoes. Uh, we don't do too much, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good. It's good. It's good to chat to you. Um, You know, like, one, one of the most uh, things that I respect about you is... um. You know, your, your longevity. Uh, uh, Days Maliban says you also have oranges in your bag. Is that true? No, I still carry that. I still carry that. You know, the, the, the theory is that after you, you, you run, you must have something in your stomach. So I still carry my, I still carry my food uh, in my bag. I still carry my, my drinks in my bag. You, okay. When they are not there. The, the thing is that uh, the tough thing about everything is that you, you have to have your lunch at a specific time so that you can have a quality workout. So I can't yeah. get into the stadium with a uh, full stomach. Hey, but I want the... everything to be on normal. So I make sure that I carry my fruits. I make sure that I carry my, 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 my drinks all the time. <laughs> okay. Even my snack. Sometimes I have the snack day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the rumors, uh, rumors uh, are circulating on the track and field uh, circuit in the world. They say... Uh, Long distance runners, they eat the most. Is it true? I mean, uh, you burn a lot. <laughs> you burn a lot of calories. So you have to eat a lot. So uh, we, I, I eat a lot. I mean, a lot of people always ask, where does the food go? <laughs> but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I know where it goes. Because, I mean, uh, my morning run, I, I, I can almost get, get like 1,000 calories that I burn. Yo, so yo, 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 that's yo, a lot. Yo. Lord, yeah, so that's a lot. I need to eat a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I understand. Uh, you can eat as much as you want when you're burning a thousand with one run. Even the the jumpers, Cheswell, Johnson, and them, Worry Valdo, the sprinters, they can't eat that much. Eh? I mean, uh, jumpers. The I mean, for, for 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 jumpers, you can take a thousand calories in five days. For me, you kill that in just one morning run. <laughs> one morning run is enough. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, one of the things, as I was saying, the, one of the things that I respect the most about you is your, your longevity. You know, if I look at um, your career, you know, it's, it's such an amazing career and it shows a lot of, uh, of uh, trust in the process because, I mean, you started at cross country, you were doing cross country. From cross country, you became a specialist on the track. From the track, you moved on to 10K on the road and then it was 21. Now it's a marathon. So can you just tell us what, what has kept you motivated for so long? And I mean, moving from events on the track from 1005 all the way up to the marathon. What has been your, your, your secret to say, you know, for those who want to uh, do this sport for a long time? I mean, it's a, it's a long journey, but it, it goes with the mentor. So yeah. I can say that I have a mentor. You know what's funny about my mentor, Michael Semer? Yeah. He, he always believed that he used to be a fast runner, but he was never. <laughs> Every time he was to tell us about uh, his journey in Newcastle, in Durban. But we used to see the pictures when he ran his comrades, when he ran his two oceans and all that, that he was never a fast runner. <laughs> you don't need to be a fast runner for you to be a good mentor yeah, or a good coach. Absolutely. You, were, you know, there were a lot of improvements that you made in your life or the breakthroughs that you made in your life through his mentorship. So Absolutely. I can say the man, the man is, is amazing. He yeah. does in his own way. Uh, you do wrong, he never tells you. You do right, he never tells you. You know him, he will say, even if he's sitting on a, on a certain spot, he, you come back with a, maybe a loop, you go 3.45, and when you come back with four minutes, 
He said, still good. <laughs> in your part, he still say, okay. He never say to you it's bad. He, he knows how to motivate you people. Yeah, yeah. So, he, he's the pillar. Mm. I'm the dude who's the pillar. So that's what, what keeps me going. But he's a man who always believe in a long-term uh, goals. Like, yeah. uh, I've worked with him for, for a very long time. I remember uh, 2004, 2005, when the late, it's my friend anyway, Bully. Yeah, hey. uh, he will make a, he will make a, uh, he will come with sparks and tights and t-shirts and everything. 2005, December camp in Val. My coach, Michael Selman, never wanted me to get anything from Mbuli. You know what Mbuli used to do? Bring the clothes and then he say, whatever number one, you choose whatever you want. Mm. My coach said to me, you are not going to get anything. Because you are capable of getting something. Mbuli sponsored by Adi. Yeah. Can be sponsored by Adi. So don't go yeah. for for easy way. You need to work hard. And then yeah. believe me not, it was five, three years later, I managed to get uh, a sponsorship from Adidas. That's so, it. so my coach, I can say, he's the pillar. I'm yeah. just the doer. I just listen yeah, to yeah. whatever he says. No matter how hectic he can be, but I just chose to listen to whatever he says. Even today, I think I met him three days ago. He came. Surprisingly, when I went to for a jog at, you know your park, man, Temba, by Riton Day. <laughs> I found my yeah, coach. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, no, I came to see you. And then he left. He didn't even go watch what I was doing. <laughs> like, oh, whatever. And then he left and I went to do my workout. So I can say having him is a it's an honor. It's a it's yeah. an honor. You know, you learn. I learned from him since then, even today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean Brass Punch, uh, Mr. Michael Sam, I've also got so much respect for him, you know. Um obviously we, we trained under him as well. But exactly what you're saying, uh, you know, he's, he's got a, a way of motivating and, and getting the best out of you without... It's almost like unspoken expectations, you know? Uh, you can... you can Whether you run good or bad, you always feel like you're in his good books, you know? It's never... You never feel like uh, he, he loses respect for you. He, he's always... I mean, there's no coach... I don't know many coaches. Five o'clock or four o'clock morning run, he's standing there, stopwatch, you know, watching the splits. Afternoon session, he's there. And even in your, your personal life, you know, he's somebody that you can always uh, lean on and so on. So I, I, I truly understand what you're talking about, you know? Yeah, you know, with, with Michael, as a person, you know, sometimes you must, you must be critical. You mustn't say only the things that uh, people need to hear. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Believe that, uh, I believe that if my coach was an ambitious coach, yeah, like a real, real ambitious coach, like other, any other coach in the world. My career could be elsewhere, mm. but I appreciate him being who he is because my career is where it's user friendly for me. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what happened. probably I could have had injury if I was yeah. too ambitious. Yeah, but the way he is, uh, I'm where I am now, I managed to go like more than 50, 10 years now in my running, running well. When I go mm. to sleep, I'm happy. When I'm sitting, I'm happy. Yeah. When things doesn't work well, I'm happy. But if yeah. you're another coach who was going to focus on me alone and push me too much, probably I could have a lot of injuries and I couldn't have survived this long. Yeah, yeah. So one of those things that you, when you are sitting as a person, you go like, you know what? I'm blessed. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that you, you run fast, you run slow, whatever you do, you always say, good. <laughs> you know, you, you can come today and you, your laps you go like 115, the next day you go 125. I've never had my coach saying that. <laughs> Sometimes for me, I will go, I will expect him when I go too fast. I remember when I used to pray, train with pressures and, and let me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. He never say you are breaking the record. You just say good, good, yes, good, good. <laughs> so I can say his way of life, uh, yeah. next to my career in a way, and I hope that the things that I want to achieve and the things that he wants me to achieve through our journey, the day it ends, we both have achieved them. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, can you tell us about your nickname? Uh, I'm going to take some questions, guys. Thanks for the questions that I see are coming in. Uh, uh, Kofifi, Mpoma Kofani, I see you. 
Uh, Ransom Okopane, I see you. Sebarzo, I see you. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'm going to be taking your... I'm going to take a question here from uh, Spark Season. He says, uh, before your marathon run, how much calories do you take and what type of food do you prefer and how long before the race? Uh, I, I'm not sure if he's talking about training or before racing, but... Uh, before your marathon. Before my marathon, I always take uh, three, sli- two sli- three, three slices of bread with jam or butter. <laughs> and I let the, not even half of a coffee, yeah. just a little bit. That's yes. a little bit. And then yes, after that, thing, because the only thing I need is energy. The energy yeah. lies on us. So before the marathon, you eat a lot of carbs the night before. Yeah. So yeah. you want anything that can digest very quickly, but you yeah. still have the energy. So I always take three sticks of bread with butter or jam or, or peanut butter. But I, I prefer peanut butter because it's staying longer. In my White stomach. or brown bread? I'm always on brown. It stays longer <laughs> in the body. I need that. I need that longer. The longer it stays in the body, I'm always comfortable with that. So uh, most of the time, three hours before my race, I prefer three to two, two slices of bread with peanut butter. Right. Now, thanks. That's, uh, that's simple and practical advice. Uh, another question over here from Gemini since time. Uh, it says, eh, is it Gemini? Yeah. Do you ever feel your racing before you compete? Sorry? Do you feel your heart? They say, they, they're asking, do you get nervous? Do you feel your heart racing before a race? What I told myself is one. If I'm not going to run anything less than 800 meters, I take it as a long distance. Yeah. yeah there, there's a theory that there's a middle distance in life, but there's no such. I've been on the call with you for for a very long time. If I have to sit in a call with you for a minute, it's too long. Yeah, yeah. So I, I dedicate my time in terms of my running instead of my nervousness. The nerves are always there. Yeah. But I tend to relax and control them. The only way I control them is that my nervousness, I, it has, should be in the race. Yeah. Not outside the race. Because if I can be nervous before the race, two minutes plus, I'll be tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm running a 5K, if I'm nervous at the first kilometer, yeah, who's going to run the four kilometers nervous for me? Yes. So for me, I always keep cool and keep calm. That's why you see me in a race. I can even laugh with anyone. <laughs> yeah. My mind has to work when I get into the race because I trained for that. I'm yes, ready for yes. that. Yes. So I'm not going to waste my energy for, for something that I don't know what's going to happen. I don't understand why is it happening. The only thing yeah. is that my presence in the race is, is very important. No, oh, I hear you. I mean, um, I think it's, 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 it's one of, that's very good advice, you know, like about controlling your nerves and using your energy rather to run fast than you know wasting it being nervous and so on and um i'm gonna take more questions i see uh Mpo kofifi asked a question i'll take that question now uh alicia i see you as well uh but your nickname uh i, I know many people uh have heard your nickname but they're not sure exactly what it means can you tell us uh about your nickname my my nickname my nickname came from football, basically. Yeah. You know when you have to go fifty fifty with a human being and then fifty fifty is fifty fifty. So I, I literally went very hard and then the guy ended up on the ground. So that's how the name came and then they were like TP. TP. <laughs> yeah, and then I was standing and the guy went on the ground and we went on the fifty fifty. So it was it was it's like when when you say head on. Yeah. And uh, another car just is damaged more than you, so <laughs> another car. So that's where the name came from because I used to play football. So that's how I got the name. I didn't get it from athletics; I got it from football. So that, that's very that's very interesting, you know, because um, you know when I ask most of the most of the runners, you know, they they usually started at a different uh, sport. So I take it when you were younger, did you always see yourself being a, a an athlete? Did you see yourself? running international competitions, flying all over the world, being the record holder? Uh, or, or where did you see yourself when you were, let's say, much younger in primary or high school? 
I don't know where athletics came from, <laughs> to be honest. I started running in my late career. I didn't run when I was 7 or 12 or 13 or 14. My, my career in running started pretty late. I think I was exiting, uh, I don't know whether it was secondary or whatever. I used to play football. They used to yeah. believe that I where I come from. Yeah, yeah. They used to believe so because I would, I would run central midfield for wow. a very long time. But one day I was running, I think I was running like four rounds or, yeah, I think three, seven rounds or they call it seven rounds or something like that. And then when I finished it, they were like, how namala? It's like you don't have the stomach. They were in. <laughs> and then after that, I was like, no, let me try this. Then I tried yeah. it again for the second time. Then I tried it, I think at a district level. It was 2002. And then when... I won the provincial championships. I came to Pildish. Yeah. I think the minister by then was on the Balfour, I think. Oh, on the Balfour. Gave me uh, shoes. Like, all the provinces, we are getting, like, uh, nice MX shoes. Yeah. In my mind, it was like, if you run very fast, you beat everyone in the province. Or, you know, you no, know, yeah, it was in the province. Next day, you get the shoes. So, I was playing football, but... Everything turned when I got the shoes. I like the shoes. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is what you do. You beat everyone. You get shoes. No football. You get the shoes. <laughs> okay, hey, that's, that's that's very interesting. Um, I'm gonna take another question. It says, uh, "What advice can you give to the youth who want to follow in your footsteps?" To the youth. Uh, to the youth. I was confused. Very, very confused. Like, I, I, I just alluded now. I was just playing football. What motivated was the shoes. If you discover your talent very early, yeah, like very, very early, don't waste your time. I believe uh, after my World Champ finishes last year, oh. and then my belief, as a, my belief and my coach believe in the past, if I had a proper base in terms of running, mm. I could have been better. I could have been a better athlete or a faster athlete or maybe an icon now. Like the casters, the waves, yeah, Duvers and the Rashwas, the Akanis. But because I never had an opportunity because I come from the rurals, I was just following what's happening in around uh, our neighborhood. So what yeah. do what you see, what you get. Once you see your calling, go for it. Once you yeah. once you're calling, don't waste time. And then stop this thing of uh, peer pressure. Yeah, yeah. Or things changes. And when things changes, it's your, the reality is one. The reality is you. Yeah. So I still think that if I got an opportunity or awareness, my life could have been better. And then now we don't have to rely on our teachers. We don't have to rely on our coaches. Social media is there. Everyone is exposed to me. But the government is granting one gig or whatever, 500 megabytes per day in provinces, in the cities, even the rurals and whatever. Maybe it's that. If you find the opportunity, grab it. Because yeah. you don't necessarily sit in the office or another. Whatever God gives you as a talent, you need to use it. Yeah. So That's... when when you get an opportunity, make sure that you grab it with two bands and use it. And yeah. don't your time like I did. I wasted a lot of time. You know, I was talking to my manager at that time. It's like, you wasted a lot of time into track running. Yeah. But he does not understand that. It's not a waste of time into track running. It was yeah. a waste of time that I did not get the opportunity when I was young. Yeah. Hence, yeah. I love to be on the track. Yeah. If I get the opportunity when I was young to run on the track, I could have been maybe a good marathon runner or a good, good track runner like yeah. other guys in, Europe, in Asia, in America. Yeah, so all yeah. I can tell them is that as soon as you see your potential, grab it with your bare hands and then focus on it. Now that, that's that's very good advice, you know, because, you know, like I, I see, I've seen it a lot at, at schools when I coach as well. You know, you've got a lot of young athletes. He's, you can see he's talented more in, let's say, running, but he enjoys rugby or maybe cricket or another sport or soccer even more. Um, and I think you know, I, I believe once you're good at something, I don't. it doesn't matter how old you are, 
you have to start at that age because if you look at all the a lot of the 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 the, the greats you know if you look at Serena um the lebrons all these other international athletes as well you know they 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 took the opportunity i think rugby also uses a very good model where from a very young age whether it's primary school you in a, a system of helping you become a better rugby player one day if we can do that also for athletics where we've got a 6 year old 7 year old who has potential yes they don't have to train like professionals but you know everything that they're doing is 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 building them up to be set up for the future you know i think what you're saying would would make a, a big difference especially for athletics running and road running in south africa you know yeah that's that's, that's the perfect example you know they always say we we don't have the capacity as people they say you must expose your kid yeah. with any toy that they can have with any sporting activity or cultural activity or art activity as you can but it's just that yeah. we are not as well equipped to do such you know mm. but you know you look at whatever the kid enjoys most yes, or that's yes. most should you give them the opportunity you'll see a difference but it's just yeah, that you yeah. are not well equipped when it comes mm. to such so that's the toughest thing about life but uh passion is what drives everything yeah if if you can give a kid uh, something that they are passionate about things always work out very very well yeah we we, we in south africa we we, we like such we I, I, i like my, my like in my family now my wife is a athlete i'm an athlete we might be blind followed that by that athletics works but we may not know that our kids maybe they can be rugby players or we can never match yeah, yeah. or we can never see in our house so yeah, the only thing yeah. i to the people out there is that you know what look at what the passion about the kids if mm. you see this passionate about something focus on that yes. kids that are not necessarily have to live your dreams because even if today i was a world champion or olympic champion i will want my kid to be a king of the universe they achieved they i want them to achieve two gold medals in terms of olympics and world champs and then i want them to get win the loris award you know it always <laughs> to get more than what you get yeah but it's the matter of life is life the calling is different yeah what if your name is mukoka in terms of athletics but my surname can also could be mukoka in terms of accounting yeah yeah because of what i'm exposed to what my family is exposed to is different so yeah. i will give your kids what they are what they love and then support them and see where it end up Oh, that's good. Uh, you, you, you touched on education. Obviously, um, yourself, you, 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 you went through. I think there's pretty much no. Most or all South African athletes have to take the education route, you know, because number one, it creates opportunity to run uh, more competitions, but as well as obviously achieving your degree or whether it's a diploma or whatever it is that you achieve. Um, what, what role did education play for you um, as an athlete as well? You know. Athletics is a it's a it's a long shot medium career but like education is a long term career yeah i i went to war when i was still in my 20s my late mother used to say to me i don't care about your running it's not important but you need to get your your diploma your degree Yeah. I started my running after I got my my first diploma in life. Because she said to me, uh education is key. Yeah. If you run 400 meters, you have to measure it. And when you measure it, you say meters. That's mathematics. That's science. Yeah. So if you just going to be a runner 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 run, run, without any knowledge. Yeah. How do you know when to stop? <laughs> And how to stop? Because that's science. <laughs> no when to stop but in essence you are saying sport it quick sport it finish very quickly have something to fall back on i started yeah, yeah. focusing here after i got my my diploma then i started being an athlete before then my mother did even one or two days i remember a few athletes i wouldn't mention names they used to say to me i'm a top runner of users and then by that time what was it yeah it was no yeah university sports yeah yeah 
Usa. Yeah, and then he used to say to me, I'm a top runner of users because I will run with a few of my opponents. Uh, at the SAs, they will kill me, but when it comes to users, because I was fighting for a buzzer, I will, I will fight till the end. <laughs> will beat me today, but next week, when it comes to my buzzer, I will fight till the end. All of them, they know if they are watching, I will fight with you. <laughs> so my mother used to emphasize the education kind of way. But yeah. uh, the way she started, it's like, there's no way you cannot run a 10 kilometers without calculating the 10K. Exactly. In terms of time, distance, pace, and everything. Yeah. So she was showing me that, you know what, education is key. Mm. So like, that's how I grew sense. up everything. Like, when, when I watch you, you know, like, I've had the privilege of, of training with you for some years, at, yeah, for many, many years. And... You know, one thing I've, I always uh, respected and one thing I also learned even in my training from you is exactly what you're talking about, your mom talking about like the science and the intelligence of being an athlete. You know, I, I watch how you train, you know, and you're almost like a, you're like a stopwatch. It's, it's like you've got an internal stopwatch in your body uh, where you know exactly what pace you're running, what the split is, with or without a watch, you know, you almost have that... Uh, I mean, I, I call it, uh, uh, what is it, physical intelligence. Because, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, the intelligence of books, the intelligence of mathematics and so on. But sometimes people forget about the physical intelligence of being able to do things with your body that an ordinary person cannot do, you know. It's an intelligence in itself. And just watching you train, you know, seeing how you, you apply your mind in, in making sure that each and every training session goes 100% and you take a as much as you can from it. So I think you, you, you listened well to your mother and, uh, you know, you applied it very practically in your day-to-day -day training. I, I think it's, uh, it goes to everyone who, who went to school. It, it's periodiz periodization. Yeah, yeah. You know, you went, when to do it, how to do it, and why you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, my coach is like a... I, I don't understand to explain him. Yeah. Yeah, but I always put credit on him. Even the guys that I work with, I've seen a lot of people making mistakes. The group that I've been training with for the past 20 years or so. Yeah. So for me, it's all about where do I want to be and when and how. Yeah, yeah. How do I reach that? And why do I have to reach that? Why, do, why is it important for me to be there at that time? So yeah. even when I run like... Let's say my coach says, do the intervals for 200 and then you have to run a 40 on a 200. I calculate why does the coach want that. Yeah, and yeah. then I go back to the room and I say, why did he do that? And then I say, when the coach said to me, I need to run 200 meters for 400 or 200 every 200 for like 10 seconds, I mean 20 seconds every 100 meters. Yeah. And I couldn't finish the program. Why did I not finish the program? Yeah, yeah. And why, why was, what was important for me not to finish the program? And then after yeah. some time, I'd be like, okay, that means I learned from that. And then why did I learn from that? So for me, it's all about calculating, understanding, and studying. So wow. it takes a long. It takes long. You may think that it's easy for me, but I took for, for a very long time for me to understand it. Yeah. I think that, that that's such an amazing uh, insight that you gave there, you know, about... Um, you, you, I can hear you, you, you're a student of of, um, of the sport, you know, uh, and and it's I think it's so important to understand what you're doing as well. It's not just running, you know, and it's not just uh, uh, the gun going off or a training trying to good by luck, you know. The more consistent you are, the better your results over a long time. All right, I'm gonna ask you the next question now. Uh, there's a few here that uh, let me just get to this question over here. It says, what is your favorite workout? For me, anything that is long. But uh, my favorite workout, the one that gives me motivated is 1,000. Yeah. If I didn't do 1,000 before I go around, I don't feel confident. Yeah, yeah. So, so 1,000 meters, that's your favorite uh, workout and favorite training? Yeah, if I do 1,000 meters, I'm very happy and I'm very excited <laughs> because one of the best things that I can measure my fitness level. Okay, okay. uh, like for me, it's like, you know when you were a kid, if you didn't eat your soft porridge, 
you can cry the whole day. So if I didn't yeah, do yeah. anything about my race, whatever race that I want to run, whether it's a league meet or whatever, I want yeah. to one that. Okay, no, I understand. I know the thousand meter, and I know you, uh, with with the sponge group, you guys all there was always thousand meters and uh, short rest, but the intensity was always high. Obviously, preparing for uh, competitions and so on, right? Yeah, no, one thousand meters is like uh, it's you, you, it's a it's a it's a it's a disease. I I don't know. It's a disease because uh, what happens is that you test your endurance and you test your speed at the same time. Yeah. Because people run 1,000 in a different way. You find people that I can find the training plans that run the first 600 very hard, yeah. or the first 500 very hard, and the last 500 very slow in a medium pace. You yeah. can find other people that are running like uh, the last part very hard. So it depends on the kind of people that you are. Even myself, I know my my thousand. I prefer to run them very medium, but finish at a specific time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, it makes sense. It makes very, it makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna see what more questions we've got here. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on to some of mine. All right, yeah. So obviously, um, there's a uh, on the track and there's also off the track. What what, what does Stephen Mukoka do when he's not on the track? You know, to just relax. What type of music are, are you listening to? Are you also on the Ama piano? Hey, left hand, left hand, Timbana. You you can ask my fellow brother. <laughs> that we need to listen to his 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 uh Kosa guy Ringo and Tando when I was at Val. Life <laughs> change. You know, things keep on changing, man. Yeah. When you grow, even now, like uh, I like to listen to a lot of soul music now. Yeah. But back then it was different. Even now it's different. So I'm always a chilled guy. I, I what I do. When I'm off season, even on on season, it's always the same. I'm uh, I like watching series. I don't like movies, because movies yeah. are boring, happy endings all the time. So I prefer series because I can spend my time, you know, thinking, wondering what will happen. Most what, of the what series. What series are you watching? Just name one series. Hey, but I, hey, people. Who, hey, I hope people don't judge me. But I'm always on this night course something El Chapo, El Chema. <laughs> yeah, you know all this. Uh, drug lot kind of things, you know. You want to see what's happening in the world, so yeah. <laughs> okay, now that's interesting. Uh, Ransu Mukupan is asking here. He says, um, "Are there still any nerves before a race?" I think you answered that, that question, but uh, maybe you can answer it as well. No, nerves, nerves, nerves will always be there. I'm always yeah. nervous, but uh, I learned my. I learned one thing. I always become nervous for myself. Yeah, I don't care about what happens outside. If I target to run like a twenty-eight minutes and a ten k, I become nervous for myself. I don't care about anyone else. Yeah, that's why you see most of my races in the country or most of my races overseas. I always prefer to dictate. And yeah. if I if I get into a race and people are dictating what I'm looking for, I will just kick and kick yeah. because whatever I'm looking for is there. What what why do I need to waste energy? So yeah, I'm always yeah, nervous. Yeah. The only thing, uh, the nerves that I have is that I hope tomorrow when you get there, if I want three minutes per kilo, it's three minutes per kilo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if it's not that, I get nervous in the race and before the race. So the only worry that I get and the nerves that I get is that pre-race, in the race. But in the race, when things are settling, I'm like, they're doing what I want. Yeah. Or whatever I'm looking for, it's happening. Then I, yeah. I become relaxed. Okay. No, I understand. Uh, I think uh, that's the questions we had, and I think we also, if I look at the time now, I think we've, uh, we've spent almost uh, over oh, close to forty minutes. So I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up over here, uh, Mukoka. Uh, thanks a lot for your for your time. You know, thanks for for being such an inspirational athlete for such a long time. You know, I, I think there's so many athletes that look up to you and you know i personally believe that you know athletes must be given the recognition and the respect and they must be you know given the, the honor that's due to them while they are still around and while you're still running while you're still in uh, some of your best shape you know and you know a lot of respect to you uh keep on pushing i uh, keep motivating the youth and i hope you know we can continue to have more conversations like this so that um more people can learn from you you know no, I can say thanks for the invite, and then I hope maybe you can invite me again, maybe in future. 
probably yes. in the next before we get out of this corona <laughs> we'll get out strong anyway because our yeah, heart yeah. comes first and then uh, to all the, the athletes out there the only message i can give them is that we don't know when are we going to run we don't know when are we going to make a breakthrough through this uh, pandemic yeah is it but remember our conversation periodization is very important yeah on top of that is that uh, you got talent i believe sir i've got talent and i believe sir africa we can go far and i hope uh, we work in groups like yesterday i was watching manangoi chiriote the group on it yeah yeah in terms of short distance or whether it's long distance in sir africa we have to change the mentality yeah whether i'm good or whether i'm strong whatever teamwork is the very important key okay. i always see the sir africa and they always like the post of other people posting that team of team of but in sarah gurun we don't practice that yeah but i hope that we start practicing that because uh, there are a lot of races in the entire world the only thing that we should require is the team of yeah so good luck to everyone stay safe and then i hope to chat with you soon all right thanks a lot uh, mugoka uh, thanks for your time tp uh the sa 10000 meter record holder i mean this is a legend and we appreciate you um and yeah we're gonna we we'll, we'll see you hopefully we'll chat soon everybody thanks for watching uh thanks for watching back chat we we'll chat all things athletics life motivation i hope this uh motivated you and encouraged you as well uh going forward so thanks a lot uh we'll see you guys next time okay no chess uh, thank you bye bye